Hi, this is Mark at learnhowtogarden.com and in today's episode of the 10 Minute Gardener we're going to be doing one of my absolute favourite jobs in the garden and that's we're going to be planting out our tomatoes in their final growing positions for the summer. And what I'm going to show you today are the two commonest ways that most of us grow our tomatoes. One is in the soil of our greenhouse or in this case the polytunnel um, or in grow bags and I'm going to show you how to get the maximum sort of benefit from those sort of seedlings or the plants you've bought using both methods and there are pros and cons for both of these methods. Um, the first one I'm going to show you is what I tend to use in my tunnel and that's growing in the soil and the advantages of growing in the soil are quite simply there's a much larger area for the roots to get into. It makes watering uh, easier because those roots are spread over a much larger area and it also means that the roots uh, have available to them lots of the trace elements that we don't get in grow bags. The disadvantages are, one, you've got to prepare the soil. So in this case, this was actually double dug in the autumn, incorporating loads and loads of horse manure. As you know, I'm a massive advocate of uh, manure of any sort uh, into the sort of soil. Um, and the other disadvantage is that you can get a buildup of diseases over the years, but that's not a problem we've had here. Um, another advantage with this is that I tend to companion plant. That means I will plant something that will happily grow with these. And in this case, uh, in front of these, in a couple of weeks, I'll be planting out basil. Um, I find it fascinating. Basil is sort of from the, um, the east. Uh, and tomatoes are from uh, South America as we know and yet it's possibly the best combination of food that you can get, that combination of basil and tomatoes. Anyway, so what we're going to do now is show you what you'll need in your greenhouse. The reason we're in the polytunnel today, if we were in the greenhouse in the 10 minute garden, it's only an 8 by 6 greenhouse and it is boiling hot and it was just easier to sort of film in here. First thing we've got are some bamboo uh, supports. Tomatoes come in two distinct types. You have cordons, and those are the ones that grow in a single long stem, and we have to take out the side shoots, and I'll be showing you how to do that as we go along. Or you have bush varieties. For most of us, I really, really do think that cordons are a much better bet. Most of the varieties I told you to plant, or the ones I recommend uh, in the first and second parts of um, the tomato series, are cordons because cordons will crop over a long period of time. Sometimes they can crop over a six month period of time. With a bush tomato, it's called determinate. And the thing about a bush is you don't have a lot of work once it's planted. There's no pricking out, there's no tying in, there's no taking out the side shoots, but it will produce all of its fruit in between two to four weeks. And what that means is from a commercial point of view, that's brilliant, isn't it? You can harvest an entire field in one go. Uh, for us, we want longevity, so I think cordons are best. Um, we're actually going to plant exactly the same tomatoes in both the soil and our grow bags. They were sown at exactly the same time, they're at exactly the same batch. To show you, you know, we'll do a comparison about how the crop goes. So the first thing, we've got some stout bamboos which uh, are pushed into the ground about a foot and they're tied to a taut wire across the top. Uh, I prefer this method of doing it in the ground, especially when you're doing a lot, it's just easier. We want something that we're going to tie our tomatoes on with, and in this case I use, it's a very soft, flexible rubber. It's a plant tie and it doesn't hurt the tomato. One of the things you've got to be obsessively careful about is damaging the stem on the tomato. Any damage is like a cut on yourself. It lets in disease, it lets in bacteria, and it can be really harmful. This, as I've said, is one of my favourite tomatoes. This is green zebra. As you can see, they're short, sturdy plants. They're nice and healthy. They're dark green. What you don't want are those really tall, stringy ones you sometimes see. They've just been forced. Don't be fooled into thinking bigger is better. It's the quality of the plants you're buying little yellow leaf at the bottom which is quite normal, they're the early seed leaves, take those off. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to plant it into the ground right up to the bottom of that leaf there. And with tomatoes all of this stem will produce roots and the more roots we've got the better the plant is able to take in nutrients and food, the stronger it will grow and of course if the stronger it will grow the more plants um, 
or plants I should say, but the more tomatoes will get off it. It's got a nice healthy root system on it. So you basically take your trowel, make a hole deep enough to take this tomato up to those first roots. Now, as I say, this soil has been prepared in the autumn. And it's as simple as that, gently firm it in. In fact, that's not deep enough, so we'll take him out and drop him in a bit deeper. So very quickly, we've got the first three of our tomatoes and we've got about 35 of these to plant. Uh, as you can see, low into the ground, watered, not fed. It's the 20th of May today, uh, and we're gonna sort of do a, couple, a, a two weekly update on these. The big advantage of this is that one of the major problems with tomatoes, especially larger tomatoes, is a thing called blossom end rot. It's a calcium deficiency. Now we can overcome that using foliar feeds, certainly if we're using maxi crop or seaweed sprays onto the leaves, that will help. And we'll be talking about foliar feeds when we need to, when these are a bit bigger. Uh, but it, this tends to sort of allow the plants, as I said, to get all those micronutrients that they need in the soil. So that, that's really good. And uh, what we'll do now is we're going to sort of go to the opposite side of the polytunnel. So we're literally no more than 10 feet away, use exactly the same plants from the same batch and plant those into a grow bag and talk about the difficulties with grow bags and one or two things you can do to help overcome them to get a much, much more successful crop out of them. Hi. So what we've got now is the commonest method that most of you are going to use to grow your tomatoes and that's grow bags. Now the first thing you have to remember is a grow bag really has very very little nutrient. Um, it's much better to think of it as a water reservoir. That's the best way to think of it. They're not very big, there's not a lot of space uh, inside them. So fundamentally the most important difference you could make is to acquire yourself a pack of these. This is called a grow pot. You can get three of them for about £11. And as you can see, it's got a big open centre and a ring around there that appears to just have some spiky bits on. And what it does, it sits on top of the grow bag. You can get three into a grow bag. It increases fundamentally the amount of soil that you've got and it makes your feeding and watering so much easier. It's the biggest thing I have come across that will change how successful um, it is for you to grow tomatoes in grow bags. A lot of people get problems with waterlogging in grow bags. A lot of people get problems of tomatoes just not growing particularly well or tasting nice. So the first thing you need to do when you've got these is push it into your grow bag and it sort of leaves a little row of indentations. Take a very sharp knife and literally just cut out that piece of plastic. Just like on Blue Peter when you were a child, these are two that we did earlier. And that exposes the actual media in the grow bag. For most of you these days, hopefully that will be coir, not peat. So you've got three in here. You also need to take some string or twine. Uh, again, I'd advise nylon because it's going to be wet a lot of the time. If you use jute, it will rot off. And slide three pieces about two feet long underneath your grow bag at this point. So that basically what will happen is once the tomato is in, we'll bring those round and we'll actually create above this grow bag a V. And then onto that, we'll actually tie our support string. It's very hard with grow bags to use canes to support it. There are frames you can use, um, which can be quite successful if you just have a grow bag. But if you've got more than one, you're better off using sort of a, a technique where you're using wires supported to the roof of your greenhouse. So we have our tomato plants. We talked about these a second ago. These are green zebra. The seed leaves on the bottom need to come off. And as you can see, if we take these, we're going to be able to drop them in so that they're actually sitting directly on top of the grow bag at the minute. Um, 
the leaves are level with the top of the pot and we're going to be able to fill in there with compost so that we're going to actually increase the roots by this amount um, with the grow pots all of the feeding we do each time we use a liquid feed it'll go into the center pot and when you water the tomatoes it'll go into this ring on the outside which means that it makes your watering easier most mornings you can just walk in fill up these rings go to work dead easy and then probably once a week twice a week you can actually feed the tomato by watering into the center pot and knowing that your feed is going to the feeding roots what actually happens with the tomato it puts out roots into the bottom of the actual grow bag which is just to take up all the moisture to take up water so you've got two separate root systems going there and that's much much more effective so you take our tomato out of his pot place it so it's sitting on the grow bag in there hold the leaves gently take some multi-purpose compost and gently fill this middle pot so what we've done now is get our three tomatoes into the central grow pot the outside ring has no water in at the minute you take the string that we put underneath bring it up the sides of the grow pot and it's going to go directly above the tomato now you do left over right and under right over left and under and what you're creating is a reef knot for all of those of you who are in the scouts or the girl guides and that will hold quite happily and the reason we've done that is that that is underneath the grow bag so there's the weight of the grow bag holding it down and then we take our actual string that has gone up to the supporting wire on the top of the greenhouse and we tie that to it and that is literally directly above our tomato because what's different here is whereas with bamboo canes you actually use a small tie to tie the tomato to the cane as this tomato goes we're actually going to wrap it round the string so it's important that the string is one not going to break and two secure enough that it's not going to pull up from the bottom so by using the weight of the grow bag and actually coming up over the top of the grow pot it secures the grow pot in place and it allows us to position the string directly above the tomato once we've done all three of those we then water them in now although I said you water into the outside obviously you need to water into the center to water the tomato into the new compost you put in and start its roots hunting down for the water into your grow bags at the bottom and please remember before you do this water your grow bag about 24 hours before you plant it so it has time to swell and literally stabilize itself these are little white grow bags you know most grow bags uh, are very similar but try and buy the slightly bigger ones rather than the really thin ones the ones that are thin like a sort of tray that you get your sort of breakfast on or your lunch are worse than useless you know you're only saving probably 40 50p per grow bag you know that's less than half a dozen tomatoes in this day and age buy the you know the bigger grow bags the um, larger size these may look thin but if you notice these are quite deep ones so uh, avoid the really cheap ones you can get from uh, various places which i won't say because they have far more, more money than me and will quite happily sue me for saying their grow bags are rubbish anyway so we'll just water these in and then we'll just have a quick recap so a really quick recap the two commonest methods either in the ground brilliant avoids blossom end rot but slightly more difficult if you haven't got a greenhouse or in grow bags obviously you could do exactly the same as the grow bags but use a pot if you're going to use a pot at least 12 inches um, and really in a pot you're probably better using bush varieties uh, the only bush variety we grow is called black sea man which um, comes from near the Caspian Sea actually I'm lying of course it comes from near the Black Sea it's a it's an, a quite an old uh, Russian variety 
These are green zebra. We're also going black plum, uh, Prudence purple, uh, which is one of the very big tomatoes, you know, the, the sort of great big mamard versions. I would never attempt to grow the very big ones in a grow bag. They can get blossom end rot at the drop of a hat. If you've had problems with blossom end rot or you want the easiest, go for the smaller tomatoes. Rosada is a brilliant one. Uh, Bottom door is a brilliant one. The smaller cherry tomatoes tend to suffer less. So if you're new with tomatoes, if you haven't bought your tomato seeds, um, seeds, seedlings yet, get out there and get some cherry tomatoes. Try and avoid Gardener's Delight. Avoid the tumbler tomatoes. We do have three growing, only to show you um, quite a quirky method of growing them in some uh, old bath containers. The only other method I could advise you to use, and for those of you who haven't seen the introduction, the whole concept of the 10 minute garden is for my mom, Betty, uh, who is past 70, you know, she'll go mad if I tell you she's past 80, but there we go. Um, and f in her greenhouse, we actually have tomatoes in grow pots like this, but we've also used a system which is a hydroponic system from Greenhouse Sensations, and it's a solar powered one, so it waters itself. And the one tomato in that will give us the same literal return as these three. Uh, next week we'll actually be in the greenhouse showing you how to put that together uh, and actually how it grows. Please excuse one of my resident robins. I had a post from someone saying about the no dig bed. What are the things flitting around? I have huge amounts of robins. Uh, I'm very fortunate in uh, my allotment to have them. Anyway, I hope that helps. Any problems, please post me any questions. I'll try to answer them. Uh, and until we're back here, uh, next week. Thanks a lot uh, and I'm Mark at learnhowtogarden.com.